you. I am calling in from Tucson, Arizona. You guys, this is incredible. And I really, I've been, you know, monitoring the the information in the chats and also over on Instagram and just in general, what I'm hearing is that a lot of you are really looking for ideas on what to eat, what this whole food plant-based thing is all about, and really kind of leaning into what I've been doing. So I'm super excited to have you here. If you are watching on YouTube, hello, so excited. We don't always do a live show on YouTube, but I wanted to stream this out and get this out to the people. So hello, hello. If you'd like to watch this in our Facebook page, that is Veg Inspired Foodies Facebook page. So Facebook slash groups slash Veg Inspired Foodies. I'd love for you to join us over there if you are watching on YouTube. If you are on Facebook and you see that little link for StreamYard, in order for me to know who's commenting, you have to hit that link and give StreamYard or Facebook permission to let StreamYard know your name and your profile. So right now I can see Lisa, Amy, uh, Mary, and then you all, I'm just thrilled to have you here. Anyway, let's get into this. Drop a hey in the chat. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Again, I am calling in live from Tucson, Arizona. We are literally parked amongst the saguaro cacti. They are beautiful. The last two days have been sunny and moderately temperature, you know, a moderate temperature, and we have been enjoying um, bike rides in the desert, which I wasn't sure I would like, but I am totally hooked. So um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that one of the big reasons I wanted to eat a whole food plant-based diet was to really energize my life and really get myself back into that fit and physical shape um, so that I could ride my bike and hike in all of these cool parks and spaces that we are visiting, especially this summer. For those of you who don't know, we are booked in our outside of Glacier National Park. That was one of our super top destinations and we were able to secure a campsite. So we are headed from Tucson straight up north to Glacier. So it's going to be a fun adventure. But I'm not here really to talk about what I'm doing. I wanna give you some great information today. So I hope you have your pen and paper. I want to share with you some ideas, some things that I do to eat whole food plant-based, some some just habits and things I go to and grab. So I hope you are ready. For those of you new around here or if you're tuning in on YouTube, I am Kathy Davis, your host. I am a plant-based lifestyle coach, recipe developer, and the cookbook author of the 30-minute whole food plant-based cookbook. I'm also the CEO of Veg Inspired. Every day, I have the pleasure of helping guide people along their path to a plant-based lifestyle, whether it's to energize their life, energize their their um, vitality, and just thrive and meet their plant-based goals. I am the lucky one that gets to work with all of you. So today's focus is going to be what I eat whole food plant-based. So while I'm chatting, I'd love for you to drop any questions in the chat. I will address a little bit of why I eat whole food plant-based. Um, I see Mary's here. We have people tuning in from Massachusetts, snowy Colorado, Wisconsin, Michigan. You all are in cold climates. I'm sorry. I hope I hope my warm, sunny uh, Tucson weather isn't making you too jealous and that you are just starting to see some spring near you. So anyway, as I'm chatting, drop it in the chat. Drop your questions in the chat. I have a lot of requests all the time on meal ideas and what I eat specifically to follow a whole food plant-based way of eating. Um, so this is really me digging in deep, sharing what worked for me. Remember, for those of you who don't know, in December of 2019, after six and a half years of being vegan, I pivoted my diet a little bit and adopted a whole food plant-based, mostly unprocessed way of eating as my daily habit. So again, you know, this is what worked for me over the last year and a half, but always, you know, listen to your body, listen to um, what works really for you and do that due diligence. So I start each morning with a glass of water. Um, I do drink a couple of cups of green tea and then just one single cup of really high quality organic coffee. 
Um, it is something that I I love. I love that hug in a cup, the hug in a mug, I always call it. And it really is, you know, I don't like to drink it after 10 a.m. Um, and I really stick to one cup. I drink my coffee black. I love the flavor. And that's that's really my morning routine. Um, I get up very early. Um, again, we're in Tucson, but I am working on East Coast times. So I have calls as early as 4 and 5 a.m. here. Um, so I am, and I'm okay with that because that means that my day ends at 2 p.m. locally, which gives me time to explore the area and bike ride to the desert and all of those things. So I'm, I'm totally cool with that. So I do get up really early, um, and I don't usually eat for several hours after getting up. I'm not really hungry in the morning, um, and I like to really get that, you know, that pump of hydration and then, you know, my cozy, warm green tea. Um, my meals are very high in carbohydrates. I eat, and they're whole carbohydrates, whole foods, plant-based. I'm not eat, sitting over here eat, eating donuts or, you know, a lot of processed carbohydrates. I'm eating the whole food. So a lot of potatoes. I eat a lot of brown rice. I didn't used to love brown rice. And a great thing that um, helped me as I transitioned was actually mixing some white white rice and brown rice um, and then slowly increasing the brown rice and reducing the white rice. So I do cook those first and then mix them. Um, and that really helped me kind of get into the texture of a brown rice. I eat a lot of beans. Again, I was 35 before I loved beans. I, it took me so long. My, my sweet husband would always cook them and I would always pick them out of everything chili i would have a would have my big bowl of chili and a pile of those red kidney beans next to it because i never ate the beans so if you are not a bean lover there is hope for you um i you know it's really just a matter of how they're cooked i find that when i cook them myself i can make them creamier and have a, a nicer texture than the ones out of the can so drop in the chat if you want that um my bean recipe, I'm happy to send that over. It's super easy. We use a slow cooker, but you could also do it on the stovetop. And then I eat a lot of whole grains, a lot of oats, a lot of farro, bulgur, frica. Um, they are main staples in, those are all main staples in our pantry. Um, I eat a lot of other things too, fruits, veggies, crackers. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, just eating whole um all the time. I just make sure that they're as minimally processed as possible. But usually 50 to 60% of my plate is a whole food carbohydrate. So again, as I am talking, feel free to drop that and you know, any questions you have in the chat. So once I'm up and my body's ready for food, I am digging into something like oatmeal, either overnight cooked or my favorite way is actually the veg inspired oat bowls and i actually came up with this one day um i i was in a rush for work and so i used to eat my oats more like muesli more like a cereal and i was in a rush for work i was running a little bit late so i threw everything in my to-go bowl and threw a lid on it and shoved it in my lunchbox. and when i got to work which was only like 10 minutes but by the time i got settled and grabbed my breakfast um my oats had been soaked for about 30 minutes and it was, they were the perfect texture. And so I, if you want that recipe, drop it in the chat and let me know and I will reply to that. And, um, and honestly, if I say something that you're interested in, I do have recipes for most of these things. They're either on my YouTube channel or my website or possibly even on Instagram. So just drop in the chat and I'll, excuse me, find the link that works for that recipe. So the veg inspired oat bowls are also a favorite. Sometimes I'll mix those up while I'm having my tea and then, you know, 30 minutes to an hour later, I'm ready to eat. I also really love Ezekiel toast and English muffins for breakfast. Sometimes I'll do a light smear of nut butter or jam. I love, love, love the Ezekiel raisin cinnamon bread with a thin layer of walnut, maple walnut butter. I love that crazy walnuts, maple walnut butter. Um, sometimes I'll do avocado toast. Um, on days that I have more time or like a break in between meetings and calls, I will whip up a quick tofu scramble 
or um, potatoes or hash browns. I've also been known to get up and bake the tofu for breakfast sandwiches. Um, I leaned into smoothies. Um, they were a daily habit for me before we hit the road in the RV. Um, but what I found was, is, and I would drink my smoothies over the course of an hour, you know, while I was getting ready in the morning on my way to work, I would usually bring my, my 20 ounce smoothie container on my way to work or my, yeah. And then, um, sometimes I wouldn't finish it. So I drank them really slow, but once I was in the RV, I found that I was drinking them too fast. And I really wanted to make sure that I was controlling how much food I was eating. Um, and a lot of the plant-based doctors, especially when um, they were looking at weight loss, they uh, suggested avoiding smoothies because you're drinking so many calories. So I tend to eat more of the whole plant food. Um, so if I'm going to sit down to a bowl of fruit, how much fruit would I actually be able to eat in that sitting? So that's something that was a little bit different to me because we often hear, yeah, yeah, green smoothies, green smoothies. But with that, you know, that small focus on weight loss for me, I really, you know, listened to, you know, Dr. McDougall and how he recommended kind of eating the whole fruit versus the processed. So if you want more information, again, I'm happy to drop the, that research in the chat. So that's kind of my breakfast. They're pretty easy. I Again, I don't eat them until usually mid-morning. Um, and I, I try not to make them overly complicated. Uh, there's a lot of great ideas in the 30-minute whole food plant-based cookbook. So there's sweet potato and apple bowls. There are some French toast. There's a French toast bake. There's my super easy tofu scramble. So if you are looking for any of those ideas or want to give one of those a try, that's a great place to start. You can message me um, and we can you know chat about that. So then I eat lunch usually around noon or one. Um, and I'm not giving you time so that you can adhere to my way of eating, but more so that you can kind of see how my day goes. Um, my lunch is usually leftovers or something made ahead. So I'll often do leftover potatoes, maybe some frozen broccoli and some type of sauce, either tahini sauce or a tahini mixed with a little barbecue um, or my squash queso, which is absolutely delicious. Um, I use um, lots of flavor in there so it doesn't really taste I would say like squash, more like a cheesy sauce. Um, that is in the 30 minute whole food plant-based cookbook. I also love potato wedges or those armadillo tots from the engine two cookbook with a salad. The armadillo tots are amazing. If that's an interest, again, I did a YouTube video on that. Um, some other foods that I like for lunch, I'll throw sweet potatoes in the oven, bake those up, open up a can of black beans, add some spinach, and a little drizzle of tahini sauce, and that's my lunch. Um, sometimes I'll make pasta or farro or quinoa salad, so like a whole grain pasta. Um, I'll make those ahead, mixed with lots of veggies and some kind of dressing, and then I'll eat that served cold. Um, and sometimes my breakfast moves kind of into lunch, and I am maybe having a breakfast sandwich, or um, which I usually do, like I said, baked tofu, tempeh bacon on an English muffin or bread with a smear of uh, avocado, maybe some nacho no cheese, or even that um, queso would be good drizzled on top. And then I also like, so if I don't have a salad, I will, you know, be sure to kind of add in some greens to all of my meals um, and or a side of greens. But I also like wraps. So when I was working outside the home and going to work every day, I have these perfect rectangle containers that would hold two of my whole grain wraps. And I would eat this probably three or four times a week. I would lay the wrap, two wraps in there, there'd be two wraps, and I would smear on some hummus, usually oil-free hummus that we could get from Whole Foods because we lived near Whole Foods when we were in Pittsburgh. And then I would load on my spinach, my cut red peppers, maybe some shredded carrot, uh, red orange, um, some tomatoes, maybe some yellow peppers. I like to keep, I like them to be rainbows. So I would add in different colors, broccoli sprouts, um, and then usually a little, very little drizzle of either balsamic vinegar or tahini. And then I would fold those up, 
put the lid on it, throw it in my lunchbox. And when I got to work and ate my lunch, the veggies had kind of soaked up the hummus, but also the vinegars. And it was like this perfectly tangy um, veggie wrap. So those are really popular. And I love that it gets me, you know, this nice balanced approach to my meal. I have my whole grain. I have my hummus. If you are following um, Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen, uh, I would sometimes take the hummus and sprinkle in some turmeric so that I could make sure that I got my turmeric in. Um, and if you aren't familiar with the Daily Dozen, it's a great way to kind of wrap your brain around what a balanced day of eating might look like. It's also a great way to pivot from, you know, standard American eating to this whole food plant-based way of eating because as you're checking off each of those items and I don't, I'm not, I'm not religiously checking them off, but as I'm eating them, I'm finding that I don't have enough hunger to eat the crap, right? Like I can't, I can't eat three servings of beans in a day and also a bunch of junk food. There's just not enough space in my stomach. Like I'm just not hungry enough for all of that. So it was a great way to kind of pivot me from a lot of the processed foods to getting into um, more of those whole plant foods. So like I said, I eat around noon one and then I'm back to work. And then for dinner, I enjoy exciting meals. Now, if you've heard me speak before, you know that I encourage you to plan super exciting meals for dinner. Because when you plan things that you are excited for, you are amped up, ready to cook, ready to get in the kitchen, even after a long day of work. So some of my favorites, and these are ones that I do plan ahead because they're, they can be a little time consuming, but I love to take cooked farro, layer it in a bowl, add in um, the pecan meatballs or meatless balls from the China Study cookbook with pasta sauce and then greens sauteed with garlic and some veggie broth. It's like the perfect balance of foods. And it reminds me of, you know, a good old spaghetti and meatballs, but that farro really fills me up. And so I'm able to kind of, you know, get filled up on all this whole grain farro, which has a nice nutty, great texture, perfect as a pasta replacement. Um, and I'm not eating pasta. If you've, you may have heard or may know that sometimes I have like this awkward adverse effect re reaction to pasta. I don't have it to bread, just pasta. So I know I'm not, it's not a gluten intolerance, but I think I just overeat pasta. I don't know. Um, another favorite for me are tacos. It doesn't matter what the filling is going to be. If I'm eating tacos, I'm ready to get in the kitchen and make tacos. I love tacos. They are by far my favorite. I have dozens of recipes for tacos that I'm happy to share. Um, veggie burgers or black bean burgers. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I just shared the black bean burger recipe from the Whole Food Plant-Based Cookbook yesterday. Um, that is one of my favorite burger recipes. Um, it's, you know, the texture's good. That was one thing that I was really going for. I cannot stand a mushy burger. Um, and burgers were a hang up for me when I first made the transition to a vegan diet. So it is important texturally for me. Um, meatloaf patties with mashed potatoes and gravy. Again, they're a few, they're a multi-step meal. So they do take a little bit more time, but just sitting down to this big plate of mashed potatoes and gravy and these yummy little meatloaf patties, that's, that's enjoyable. And then some easier recipes for me um, might be a burrito bowl. So I'll throw brown rice in the rice cooker and then open up some black beans, either quick pico de gallo or store-bought pico de gallo or salsa, and then either a quick guacamole or avocado. One thing I do notice about myself is that I eat more guacamole than I do avocado. So if I make guacamole, I'm very conscious of how much I'm eating. Whereas with the avocado, sometimes I'll just take the avocado, you know, we'll split what we're going to eat and then I mash it right into the, the half of the skin. And then that way it's like avocado, it's like guacamole, but I can control how much I'm eating because there's like, you know, guac's extra and you just keep slapping it on. So um, curries, stir fries, one pot soups, stews, those are all really great for those really busy nights where you kind of just want to throw everything in the pot, turn it on, set the timer, 
stir it occasionally as you walk by, but you're able to continue to go about other things. Now, again, I, I do let, live and travel full time in an RV. So my do other things really just revolve around the island of the kitchen. But if, you know, if you're in the vicinity, you can usually give your pot a stir and keep going. So I know that I really feel like I talked kind of fast um, and I do apologize. I hope that those of you that were writing or had questions did drop those in the chat. My experience eating this way is that my meals loaded with carbs, veggies, and lots of whole grains with a little bit of that whole food fat led to high energy, much healthier digestion for me. I no longer have acid reflux. Um, I'm not feeling the aches and pains that I used to feel from you know years of cheerleading and just pounding the pavement. And um, the, I had some signs of rheumatoid arthritis in my hands as well as signs of prediabetes and all of those have seemed to subside. So for me, this way of eating really works. Um, a bonus to all of that was I was able to lose and maintain 35, over 35 pounds. We're pushing 40 pounds, which is exciting. So, you know, I, I share this information with you so that you can really take a look at what might work for you, right? Everybody's a little bit different. I think this is the optimum way of eating for me. I'm always energized. I'm always excited. I'm always ready to eat. And I look forward to these high carb meals. So I'm going to pop into the chat and just kind of give, give um, and answer some questions and things like that. Let's see. Uh, Lisa, I hope I answered what I ate for lunch for you. Yes to the bean recipe. Likely to eat more brown rice if I cook it myself. So we have a rice cooker. Um, when we hit the road in the RV, we decided not to invest in any more gadgets, but our rice cooker was really like one of those things that we couldn't part with. Um, a perfect example is we went riding in the desert um, yesterday, no, Sunday, and we put rice in the rice cooker potatoes in the steamer basket on top because they were starting to get funky and I wanted to get them cooked. And then we actually put beans with pepper, onion, some spices and garlic in the slow cooker. So when we got home from our bike ride, we had um, cooked brown rice, cooked black beans, and then we made some chorizo tempeh. So we kind of made up our own little Cuban black bean inspired bowls and it worked, you know, worked really well. So we really do like having that rice cooker. Um, the bean recipe, definitely. Oatmeal recipes. I will reply to all of this. I will definitely get more information about weight loss and smoothies. Uh, I do make my own tahini sauce. Uh, an easy, easy tahini sauce is equal parts tahini and water. And then, so I do half a cup of tahini, half a cup of water, a fourth of a cup of lemon juice and one to two garlic cloves, depending on what I'm using it for. Um, I usually tell people to measure out the tahini, lemon juice and garlic first, and then stir in the water to your desired consistency because the tahini Everybody's tahini varies a little on thickness. Um, we love the Mighty Sesame. I am not sponsored by them, but they are my favorite, my favorite tahini ever. Uh, I will do the research on smoothies and weight loss. I found a black bean oat burger online. I don't like oats. Subbing the ground oats with a mix of 50-50 cooked rice, chickpea flour. Um, so I used oats in my burger recipe too, but I think we could I think we could work on that. Lisa, we'll talk offline about how we can modify that black bean and oat burger. Oil free hummus every week, always toss in turmeric. I'm telling you, Amy, the turmeric is like it makes it the perfect yellow color. Dev, always yes to tacos. Turmeric to the hummus, good idea. Making plant pure nations, coal can and soup. That sounds delicious, Joanne. Thank you very much. Um, so Lisa on YouTube, I do green smoothies if I'm having a smoothie and if I have greens to use up. I really, really like pretty food. And so, you know, my years of drinking smoothies um, 
usually I would be like blueberries and spinach because I couldn't really see the difference in the color. Um, I can, I, I love strawberry smoothies, but if I throw spinach in there and it turns that brown color, I can't look at it. Like I can drink it because it tastes good, but I don't want to look at it. Um, so I tend to do green smoothies with mango. Um, so I'll do mango and banana and a little non-dairy milk and then spinach or kale. Um, I usually remove the stems from the kale so that because they're tough and that's probably where all the fiber is, but I usually remove the stem before I throw it in the Vitamix. Um, I have a Vitamix. If you don't have a high efficiency blender, but you do want to have smoothies, um, we did smoothies every single day with our immersion blender. And what we did is we would mix the frozen fruit the night before and put them in our refrigerator so that when we got up in the morning and added the liquids, the smoothies just blended up perfectly. It was a tip from Elton Brown in one of his uh, Good Eats videos, and it worked perfectly. So if you are watching on YouTube and you want to have access to these weekly live shows, uh, head over to our Veg Inspired Foodies Facebook page. It is uh, facebook.com slash groups slash Veg Inspired Foodies. Um, I do go live every week teaching a topic on plant-based eating, going plant-based, adding more plants to your meals. Um, it's a great community, lots of activity, lots of wonderful members. And our Facebook Facebook folks, I'm so happy to have you here. Um, I think I got through the questions in the chat. If you have more questions, keep going. I have a couple more things I wanted to wrap this up with. So... If you are wondering what to eat and looking for recipes, visit the meal threads in our Facebook group or shoot me a message. One of the things that I thrive myself on is being able to be a resource to you. It is not a challenge for me or not time consuming for me to say, okay, you know, like Lisa with her black bean burger. Lisa's looking for a black bean burger and wants to sub oats. What can I do to help with that? Or if somebody sends me a message and says, I love chickpeas. I love chickpeas too, so I have dozens of recipes. Or if you're like, I need a new way, I need a new taco filling. Send me a message. I am so happy to pull some recipes for you. I have cookbooks that I love. I have my own cookbooks, my own resources. And then I also have um, a you know, a lot of recipe videos on YouTube as well as recipes on veginspired.com. So I'm happy to curate some ideas for you based on the foods you like. That is a service that I really dig into in my program, but it's also something I'm happy to do, you know, for you as you're making this transition. Um, I've been eating vegan with a focus on whole food plant-based for over seven years, um, really pivoting to that in December of 2019. So I've tried lots of recipes. I've tried lots of flavor combinations. Um, you know, I've authored a, a practically best-selling cookbook. You all were still in the process of navigating those numbers, but it's looking really, really good. Number one in vegetable cooking. So I lean into this. I am a resource for you. Um, some of you might be wondering why I would eat this whole food plant-based, mostly unprocessed way of way of eating. Like, why would I do that to myself? And honestly, I dig a lot more into this in my weight loss program specifically, but in my experience and from my readings, my own experience, the whole mostly unprocessed way of eating allowed me to get all of the whole foods that I needed think olives over olive oil, and really get the nutrients directly from the source. So all that processing of the foods strips each of those foods, each of those base ingredients of its nutrients and of the fiber and of the, you know, the things that Mother Nature put in it for us. So I lean really heavily into our plant-based pioneers for more information on the health benefits. But generally speaking, overall, what you can find if you search the internet is Whole unprocessed foods lead to better digestion. Um, people can manage things like diabetes, prevent and reverse many of the standard American diseases. So if you or someone you know is looking for a way uh, to manage their health overeating, I highly recommend looking into doctors like Dr. McDougall, the author of The Health Solution, The Starch Solution and the Healthiest Diet on the Planet, Dr. Michael Greger, author of How Not to Die and the How Not to Die how not to diet, as well as their 
co uh, corresponding cookbooks, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, and Dr. T. Colin Campbell, really, really active in these plant-based movement and really, really pioneering this research. There are so many others, um, but those are the four that I've really vetted for their research, their information, and I rely pretty heavily on their work. Um, so if, if there's somebody that you know that just or they need accountability or want to jumpstart this lifestyle and really level up their plant-based diet, I'd love to invite you to join my free upcoming workshop. Um, it is entitled Eat More Plants. It is for everyone for from veg curious folks looking to add more kale and greens to their diet or even our seasoned vegans looking to pivot to a more whole food diet or even Whole Foodies just looking for more ideas and some accountability. It is a week-long workshop with replays, so you don't have to always be there live. It is delivered live so that you get to spend time with me and perhaps even see a cat tail, although they're, they're not really active today. But I really, really want to make sure that you have the resources that you need to get more of these whole plant foods into your diet and really start living this optimum health and amplifying your energy and just really getting out there. I mean, I've seen so many awesome benefits from eating this way. Like I said, everything from digestion to clearing up my skin to just really feeling energy throughout the day. And who isn't satisfied on potatoes? But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this session. Um, if you are watching this as a replay, give me a hashtag replay. I saw lots and lots of you um, dropping information in the chat. Ooh, Joanne, I like the kale stems to make pesto. That's a great idea. Thank you for telling me I'm fabulous. Patty, you are welcome. You guys are all welcome. I love doing this every week. It's so fun for me. Joanne, thank you so much. Ooh, it'll definitely come in handy. Handy cruising. The galley cooking on a boat is similar to a fifth wheel. Yes. Yes. Do you follow the vegan galley on Instagram? She sails as well. Um, and I think it's awesome that your cats are coming. She actually has a cat too, the boat cat. So anyway, you guys, I got to pop off here. I am, it's 930 here and it's time for me to find something for breakfast, probably oats. I'll get back to this chat and get you those recipes that you are looking for. And make sure you register for the Eat More Plants workshop. And I will see you all later. I'm so excited. And thank you, Lisa. I think you'll love it too. And I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.